So today I want to take a look at this uh, item that I got from Med Labs. It is their model EMS-2C and it is called a muscle neuromuscular stimulator. Now the reason I came about getting this was that uh, I had gotten a bout of Bell's palsy and I had it for uh, oh I don't know about five weeks or so when I did get it uh, it took a little time after that but you could tell it getting better and um, <clears throat> so when I went for some physical therapy after I talked to my doctor the, the physical therapist said hell he said you could probably do this yourself so we got a prescription from my doctor to order this and uh, I just thought if anybody is uh, interested in getting one or has been told to to use one I thought I would show it ahead of time how this thing operates so here you can see guys that uh, 17 days after my second is when I got my Bell's palsy and that was on the entire left side of my face in May of 2021 So what you see here is the main unit of the EMS-2C. Obviously you have the unit itself. Here you see the uh, stimulator switch. This end is the probe tip and that you have to uh, moisten with water. You want to get that nice and wet with water. On the back side here, you'll see the uh, selector switch, and that is your current control. Going from 0 to 9. On the bottom, we see the battery door cover, and it's marked for positive and negative, as it does take... 9 volt batteries. Looking at it from the top side, we have the low battery indicator light here. We have a green output indicator here. Over here we have the current mode switch. And then we have the output connector right here. And of course, as expected, you do get an instruction manual. With this, you will also get two conductive rubber electrodes that you see here and the accompanying cable that you would need to use if you use those. And here's a close-up of that conductive pad. And you see the hole there that's where you would put either one of these uh, red or green plugs into and then the other end would go into the port of the top side of the unit here now if you are going to use this uh, rubber electrode it has to either be used with conductive gel or water soaked underneath the pads and this is not what I use, so I don't have any experience using this. Now this is what I have experience using right here. And this is the dispersive pad. It's water soaked. And this is the end right here that you would put into the same port on top of the unit. And I should also mention that the reason the... Uh, therapist, physical therapist, said that I should probably just do this myself is because when I went there, I told him ahead of time because my physician was telling me uh, what exercise to use with my fingers to help massage the 
areas of my face to help recover I actually told him that I took one of my heavy duty I had an Andes uh, razor from back in the 80s heavy duty and um, I had taken the um, head off my, uh, and, and used the vibration of it around those affected areas and he thought that was pretty pretty cool that I would do that and he said hell he says you know he showed me what I needed to do he said go ahead we ordered it after I got the prescription he said come on back in we won't charge you and we'll show you how to use it so that's how I ended up getting this to use for myself now to keep everything organized and in one place and uh, to keep from getting damaged I bought from Harbor Freight one of these Apache cases uh, this is the 1800 and I've done a review of their cases they're very reasonably priced and they're very nice cases and so um, I'll show you how all that fits in there so the first thing I did is the foam um, layers that they have in here I took out all the pick and pluck foam and just left the perimeter in for padding around the sides and then here you can see the actual unit itself fits in there excellently and then also in there I have the electrodes these are the ones that I not used yet they stay there and then this is the ones that I have used now you do want to make sure that before you actually put this away whether it's in a case or anywhere you want to make sure that not only the tip of the unit but also this pad which you have to soak you want to make sure it is totally dry before you do something like this for storage another thing when I store this I make sure that the battery is not in it you never know if the thing will uh, you know how they uh, start to leak or anything so I take the battery out and I, I also put it in a uh, plastic bag inside the uh, box now when using this unit it is imperative that you have not only the tip of the unit wet but the pad also and you'll find that the tip if it starts to lose its strength the unit then you'll you'll need to dip it I know when I was at the physical therapy place he had a little bit of water that he would continually dip the the tip into to make sure that it's uh, conductive properly so basically make sure that the tip is wet then the pad and you can soak the pad like that you get a little bit of them just like that all right so now what you'll do is you want this on the same side of the extremity that you're working with or um, like when I was doing the left side of my face I just put it uh, underneath my left arm or underneath your armpit but I just put it underneath my arm and um, anyways and then go on your soaked pad like this and then I want to I also want to state that I am NOT a doctor I'm not a physical therapist I am NOT a professional so uh, I'm just giving you an example how I use this always uh, go by the physician or professional that's telling you how to, to, to operate this now uh, this is set to pulse and so I've got it set to zero now I know I can go higher than that but I've used it so, but so there's there's nothing here so now I'm gonna go to one and you can vary it in between it's a it's like a slight uh, like a rheostat or something in there so you, it's continuously variable but now we'll go to one now depending where you put this because I'm gonna push in on the uh, the switch depending where you put it see it's still not enough I'm gonna go to two now if I go in here I get no no response so let me go a little higher 
Now I'm starting to, 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 to feel it. In fact, here, see how my finger's involuntarily moving? So over here, there's really nothing going on. But then when I move into, you can see right there. And this actually, using this therapy, really helps out this area on both of my hands. But you can see, now I'm going to put this a little higher. Now you don't want this where it's painful for nothing, but I'm just showing you. Now look at that. I mean, that's, that's, that's not me moving it. So anyways, again, use this under the direction of a professional, of which I am not. And so this is a nice little unit, and um, like I said, uh, when you saw my fingers flinch like that, you don't want it to be uh, real painful. You, you just want it to be you could, where you can feel that current. And uh, when I was using this on the uh, nerve areas in my face that he showed me to run it on, it really did, it, it felt good. And again, uh, to stimulate the nerves affected by the Bell's palsy. And also, like I said, I've also used this uh, for muscular areas too.